son of praise Baby tonight I'm yours Come on and unwrap your gift Now you can find it in store It's some tailor made for you kind of show It's like gold You don't wanna miss this Feels like it's good It's like gold How you doing Facebook world? It's your boy Jay Ville once again. I'm trying to give you some knowledge, uh, more calculus information. This time I zoomed up a little bit actually on the board so you can see um, a little bit more of the work that I'm doing so let's kind of get it cracking and begin for the next 14 13 minutes or so on another lesson all right cool so we talked last time about um, derivatives obviously now we're going to talk about higher order derivatives um, and maybe another topic if I can get to it so Let's say we have a derivative. Let's say we have a function f of x equals x squared. All right. Let's say we have a, a, a function f of x equals x squared. Well, we know the derivative we can use here is a power rule derivative. Wouldn't you agree? Sure you would. You already knew that from the last lesson, right? Cool. So the derivative of x squared actually is going to be 2x. So f prime, as we call it, remember this is Leibniz notation. I don't know why his mother named him Leibniz. I'm still trying to work that out because it's not exactly mathematics. So I'm not sure what's inside of her head. But anyways, Leibniz notation f prime of x equals 2x. At this point here, that is my first order derivative. My first derivative. I can make a second derivative by taking a derivative again. Okay, I'm going to take the derivative again here. I might need to zoom one out real quick. All right, I'm going to take the derivative again, which is going to be 2. Because technically, this really is an oh, imaginary 1 right here. So, the derivative, I take that, 1 times 2 is 2. x to the 1 minus 1, technically 1 minus 1 is 0. But anything to the 0 power is 1. So the second derivative, double prime, on Leibniz notation equals 2. That is my second higher order derivative, all right? Not too hard, not too hard, okay? What about this one? What about x cubed? Let's say g of x equals x cubed. All right, so the first derivative of x cubed, if I take the exponent and multiply it times the imaginary 1, I get 3x to the 3 minus 1, which would be 3x squared. So g prime of x equals 3x squared. If I take the derivative of the derivative, g double prime, I get 6x is my derivative. Okay, do you have any questions so far? All I did we just multiply and using the power rule. 2 times 3x to the 2 minus 1, and I got 6x. Okay? Now, just so you know, when the derivative is positive, the double prime, or the second derivative, is always positive. Which means that if the double, if the double derivative is positive, the graph is concave up. Meaning it, it goes up like that. There is a U shape in there somewhere, concave up, just like you guys that uh, wear contact lenses in science. In science, you have a contact that kind of lays, you know, it's cupped up like this, or I guess, yeah, like that. And you can see my hand is concave up underneath that underneath that parabola right there. So. It lays on the upside. Your contact lens lays on the upside like a little bowl. But if it's concave down, that means that the um, double derivative is actually less than zero. Okay? 
concave down, if the derivative is the second derivative is less than zero, it's concave down, like this shape right here. All right. Now, in addition to that, that means that the original function f is concave up, not the second derivative, but the original function f is concave up or concave down. Okay? The second derivative of any function always denotes concavity in a graph. All right? You'll learn that in calculus if you haven't taken it yet. For all of you uh, veterans out there, you should already know that for the most part. All right. Also, the derivative of e to the x, just so you can uh, get an idea, is just e to the x. It's like this right here. Derivative of e to the x equals e to the x. That's one of the easier derivatives is e. <laughs> it doesn't have anything else but itself as a derivative. It's pretty point blank. Um, also, let's look at an uh, example like this. 3e three, three to the x. The derivative of 3e to the x minus 5x squared. Now you're probably talking to yourself talking about J. Um, excuse me, but uh, you told me earlier that I could use the, the constant multiple rule here um, to find a derivative. Sure, absolutely you can, but the easiest way to do it is probably just to take it straight up. I know that the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. 3 stays outside, right? 3 times derivative of e to the x minus the power rule, 2 times 5 is 10x to the 2 minus 1, which is going to be 10x. Now, to simplify this using the constant multiple rule, which I did it here, I bring it back. 3e to the x minus 10x. All right, and I'm done with that. I mean, no gimmicks. It's right here, all right? Not a problem on this particular derivative. It's pretty simple to figure out. Not too bad. So the last couple of things was a brief introduction about uh, power rule and such. Let me give you a brief intro on the product rule real fast. If I can get this video done quick enough, I will show you how to do that. This one should not be a hassle to you. It actually should make you understand calculus a little bit better on the basic side of calculus anyway, for the most part. All right, so if I, the power rule states that if I have fg prime of x, what this basically means is I take the first, as a matter of fact, if f of x, and g of x. Alright? I take the first function times the derivative of the second function plus the second function g of x times the derivative of the first function. As I affectionately call this first time derivative of the second plus second time derivative of the first that's how we do this particular problem. Okay? So an example of such would be a problem like this, where I have um, h of x equals 3x squared times 5x plus 1. h of x equals 3x squared times 5x plus 1. Now, there is another way to do this derivative. It's called the chain rule. But again, uh-uh-uh, you don't know that yet, all right? We're going to get there sooner or later. But right now, I want you to pay attention to what we got for the product rule. So the first function is 3x squared times derivative of the second, which is going to be 5, because derivative of a constant is what again? 0, absolutely. So 3x squared times 5 plus 5x plus 1 second times derivative of the first, which is 6x, because you did 2 times 3x to the 2 minus 1, 
and you got 6x here. I then simplify my problem and I get 15x squared plus I distribute, use my distribution property here and I get 30x squared plus 6x. Okay? Any questions so far? Should be pretty simple on this part. And then I do what? I combine like terms from algebra one. Combine like terms. And of course, voila, you have the answer of 45x squared plus 6x. That, my friends, is your derivative of the function. Alright? Hope you learned something. Once again, holla at your boy. If you need to get at me, here's some information for you. It's not complicated tutoring. Alright? All the disciplines I do, 12 different subjects. Get at me, 817-300-9112. Holla! Like, oh, you don't wanna miss this. Feels like it's Christmas. Like, oh.